So this is interesting. What I have here is a tutorial, a video, <clears throat> that uses both Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer on the iPad. I'm using it for curving text and warping images, using, as I said, Designer and Photo. It's also suitable for the desktop. Um, sometimes easier on the desktop, but as I'm working with the iPad, this is where I prefer to do it. So let's have a look at this. Step one, open Designer. Now we start this process with Designer. Until these tools are built into both apps, consider this a workaround, and I'm sure they will be one day. It's just a matter of time, perhaps in version two. Now this exercise is being done on the iPad, but is as easily done on the desktop, but you do need both programs. So let's get started building a nice design. I'm starting with a preset in Designer, that is the A4 page. I'll begin with a small coloured rectangle on a plain A4 background. It's coloured so it's easy to set the shape as you begin. We're going to convert this to a text shape and we'll lose the colour for that step. Now I have one layer displayed as you can see and it's just the little purple rectangle. Now I'll need to convert the shape to a curve in order to use it and we convert this shape to a curve by selecting the command menu then convert to curves and it changes that shape to a curve. Now you can see that in there it's definitely definitely a curve it's got the word curve written after it and the handles on the edge of the rectangle have changed to transparent node handles. Now the shape is converted to a text shape by tapping the Art Text tool. That's down the left hand side of the uh, command column. You've got the, um, the Art tool. Entering the text ready to curve. Now you can see you've got a green arrow, green rectangle and a red rectangle at the top and bottom of that um, rectangle that's set out there. Now what you do to prepare the shape for text, you need to carefully touch the line of the shape with your Apple Pencil <clears throat> once you've got the artistic text option set. You'll lose the colour and your text guides and the red and green triangles will appear. Now enter your text. You'll find that initially positioning the text by moving the coloured diamonds can be a challenge especially on odd or large shapes. But persevere with it. Fiddle with it till you work out what's happening. I've got a line of text there, the word Morocco. Now there's a little green triangle just near the M. Now if you slide that <coughs> along the line, backwards and forwards along the line, it will move the position of the word Morocco. In fact, I think it initially started out upside down on the top line. Just push it along with the green triangle till it goes right around the rectangle and ends up on the inside the right way up. Now I want that <clears throat> up near the top line but the right way up. If you push it with the green rectangle it'll go around there fine but it'll be upside down. So what you have to do is use a little trick with the artistic and with the art character text. The text can be moved to below the top line by opening the character studio and setting the baseline to about 20 in this case. Depends on the size of your rectangle. This has the effect of moving the text into position. You may even leave it where it is depending on your needs. You could have left it on the bottom line. You could leave it on the top line and upside down if you like. But <laughs> it's not going to be very readable is it? Curving the text frame is simply a matter of selecting the node tool on the left menu and dragging the top frame up to where you want, followed by the bottom frame. Now you don't drag via the nodes in the corners, you just select the top bar, for example, right on the guideline there, the centre guideline, vertical guideline, and just gently drag the line up and it will curve up uh, into the curve you want. You, your text may or may not disappear depending on what you've got in there but when you drag the bottom line up 
it will all come back and you can see the handles there for adjusting um, how it works. You can more accurately control where your curves are by turning on the grid and you can see from the grid whether you've got accuracy on both sides. I've got the horizontal and vertical guides on there to show my center um, of the diagram. Finally we tidy up the shape of the curb text to how we want it. From this point we have our cur curved text almost ready for use in Affinity Photo. Save your file as normal as an AF designer file. And you can see I've got the text there, wish you were here. Um, instead of Morocco, I changed it. And now we're ready for step two. This is where we open Affinity Photo. And you import the previously saved Affinity Designer file into Affinity Photo. Each of these apps, if you're not aware of it, will read the other files. So they all read each other's files. And there you are in Affinity Photo. The file is now open and the first thing to do is save the project as an Affinity Photo file. You don't want it saving back to your designer directory wherever you put your Affinity Designer files. Save it here to your Affinity Photo directory. And that's where I've got it. Affinity Photo on the iCloud. I always know where I can find it. Now, let's place your required image as you normally would. And I've got an image there. Happy Halloween. <clears throat> I've put that below the layer that has Wish You Were Here in it. And you can see the layers um, studio there on the right hand side. And the two layers that I have in it. From the Filters Studio, select the Mesh Warp Tool. And you can see the Filters Studio on the right hand side there. It looks like a little funnel. Now you apply that <clears throat> the same way you altered the curve text in Designer. By gently dragging the centre of the top line upwards, followed by the bottom line until they're the same. Turn on the grid again to get a really accurate view if you like. And you can in fact drag any part of the image in any direction. But when you're happy, tap apply. If you don't apply the changes and you do anything else, it will snap back to the way it was and you'll lose all your changes. And you can see I've got the curve set there, so it's pretty much the same as the wish you were here curve. But you can change that as you like. And you can see there, you can in fact drag any part of the image in any direction. When you're happy, tap apply. And you can see what I've done there. I've taken the image I had nicely curved and dragged it around all over the place. So now it looks <laughs> it looks a bit scrappy, but I'm showing you that you can apply um, any almost any shape to any text. There's an example I did earlier for a sublimation print for a tapered coffee mug. I've got the curve there. I've got the uh, shape that wraps around the mug and Happy Halloween would print on the mug. Now that's a fairly quick step through and I hope you followed it but it's easy to do in Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. So although you'll see a lot of comments on various, uh, various um, Facebook groups perhaps and uh, news groups about I wish it had this and I wish it had that Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer already have these things that give you the ability to shape an object that you want to put on your page. So thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.